Namaste. Namaste. I want to thank all the amazing speakers today. Swamiji, thank you for having us and bringing us all together. And big round of applause to all of you for coming today. Um, I think if Swami Vivekananji is here through all of us, but if he's looking from above at all of us here, he would be so excited to know that this is the energy of our country, that you guys represent, you are the ambassadors of our country and the spirit that we have. So thank you for taking time out of your schedules. All of you are very busy as well. And spending a full day with us. It's really a blessing. Um, I, I wanted to share a little of, uh, I'll share a little of my journey because I think for me, rebuilding India, this idea comes from the way we build ourselves. India is made of human beings, amazing souls. And each one of us plays that role. So to me, there's no such thing as rebuilding a building unless you're focusing on each brick. And each brick has to be in the right position and in the right material in order for the foundation to be built. Then the actual top, the building, the details, everything plays its part. So for us, all the amazing messages we heard and the amazing questions that you guys were asking all have to do with how are we going to integrate that into our personal lives to make change in our own lives which then impacts our family our friends our community our schools our institutions or organizations the community the city the state eventually our country will rebuild that i started my journey in los angeles california my parents immigrated to America in the, in the 60s, 1960s, and I had the chance to live what I always call this dual identity. In school, I'm American, and home, I'm Indian, and the whole time, I'm confused. <laughs> Growing up. I think it was at college where I started to realize that this is actually joyous. Before it was sometimes mom, my mom would come to a parents meeting in school wearing a sari but with sneakers, tennis shoes. <laughs> so at that time it's kind of like, mommy, like you can wear jumpers or something, or just do one or the other, however I dress. But it was an interesting journey. As I got into high school, I started working on music. I had really a connection to hip hop music actually. And with my uh, passion for arts, hearts, um, I like to call us all artists, just like you're saying. With that passion, I had this dream that started to come up because I was also very good at math. So I enjoyed math and I had this idea. If I mix business and art, then maybe, and then I created this dream in my mind that I would become CEO of Warner Brothers. It's like a big entertainment company in America. And so I started every summer, I started, uh, even in high school, I started intern, doing internships at local radio stations, TV stations, at some of the big, and I had this vision, I had this drive that I'm going to become this type of business person, but creative business person. And that's why I applied to Wharton Business School. Because I knew that if I get into the top business school, then I mix that with my performing arts and the arts, and I'll have the right path. This was the, the lineage of thought. The school was a very good school. At that time, all these the, uh, Ambani and, and Godrich family and Trump family had a lot of, it's all a wealthy system, very highly educated and highly successful students all around, very competitive and cutthroat. But it was part of the journey that I felt like I was on. And after that, going into uh, New York City, I had formed a music group during college, but then also I wanted to get experience in the real world. So I got a job on, on Wall Street and, and started working there, enjoying the New York life. Um, during that time, I got an invitation. An invitation to go see a show. And it was a show, a dance drama show in New Jersey of 14 children from the slums of Ambala. And it was called Ikta. And usually somebody living in New York doesn't go to New Jersey. That's like going down, downwards. You stay and you enjoy the New York life. 
But for some reason, my friend was saying, you have to go see this show. So my friend and I, we, we took the train and we went to New Jersey to see this show. I didn't know anything about it. And it was 14 of our young children from the slums of Amda who performed this amazing show with a powerful message. But deeper than the message of the show in my heart was seeing the potential that existed in these small children. Knowing the places that they came from. And there was a seed planted in my heart. A few months before 9-11 had happened, and right in front of me, these World Trade Center buildings fell down. Life shifted for us in New York City at that time. A year after 9-11, I decided that it was time to leave this. This was not what I felt was my calling. Many, many different triggers, but one was this question of what am I doing with my life? I have such limited time. In front of me, thousands of people just died. And I'm asking myself now, how am I using the limited time that I have with me? And so I moved back to Los Angeles to pursue my music career. And that was also beautiful. And later on, my friends and I started a comic strip that turned into an animation studio. So I eventually I moved to Pune to open an animation studio, which was a miniature version of my dream come true. We got a few million dollars to open a nice size animation studio, and it was for me a dream to be a creative uh, owner of a, of a creative business. And right in the middle of this space where I thought I had achieved kind of the dream that I had set out to be, I realized and I asked myself, we were just sharing that we must step back and ask ourselves, what am I doing? What are we doing? Is this what I want to do? Is this fulfilling me? On the outside, if I asked myself and answered, I would say yes. I have money, I have a, a career path that I'm super excited about. I can do whatever I want to do. And if I ask myself inside, and I'm so happy in that moment that I was very honest to myself, I felt very unfulfilled. And I didn't know why fully. Because externally, a lot of things were there. In finally digging deeper, I realized that all I was doing, all this life, was just to satisfy my own desire and my own I, my own ego. I want to make this much money, I want to get this much fame or credit or image. But when I looked inside and I was by myself and I can ask myself, are you truly satisfied or fulfilled? your day-to-day -day life, how you are living, moment to moment. I said no. And that was the moment, in the middle of running this studio and having this music group, I decided that it was time to start a new chapter in life. Chapter one had to be finished. And chapter two, I was inspired by this quote by Mahatma Gandhi. He said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And I really felt lost because here was one dream and vision I had for my life, yet I felt no happiness with that. So I was misaligned. So I decided to close the studio down, stop my music group, and try to figure out what service meant to me. When I think of Sister Nivedita, two words come to my mind and heart is service, selfless service, and dedication. And I had no clue what the word service meant. I just knew that I had to try. I had to experiment. I had to jump and then see what happens. There's no rules in life. Probably one thread out of all the stories we had today, and somebody already said, shared this, is that everything changes. None of us today in this room who shared can say that at the age of 10, 15, or 20, we knew what we were going to be doing at the age of 30 or 40. And on the contrary, all of us can say that whatever we thought we were going to do, we were doing something different, most likely. That life keeps on changing. So it's not about taking a huge leap. It's just taking the first step in an intention. See how it feels. Become a little wiser. And take the next step. Experience that. Learn, grow, and take the next step. And like this, we live and then we pass away.
the importance of that journey and while we're taking these steps to say, ah, this feels good, okay, next step. Ah, this feels good. Instead of waiting till I get all the way over there because that's the end goal, reaching there, either feeling really good or feeling really bad because either you made it or you didn't make it and then say, oh, I gotta start this all over again. How do we actually start living a life where the journey is the end goal? And the end point keeps on changing, so it doesn't matter. I have a vision that I want to help these children in these communities. Good, go do it for yourself, not for them. And enjoy that process. And maybe in that process, I might actually help that community. They may be up uplifted a little. Beautiful. I may have made little impact, I made a lot of impact. It's up to me to keep reflecting on my journey, on what I'm offering, how helpful it is to others, and how helpful it is to myself, how harmful it is to others, how harmful it might be to myself, and then make changes in my life, and keep taking those steps to become a better human being, and to serve others. So my journey eventually led me to the Gandhi Ashram in Ahmedabad, where I've been working with underprivileged children, who sometimes I feel are more privileged and teach me much more than I'm ever learning or being able to teach them. But the idea is, I don't think I think of it as projects where I'm serving them. It's been this journey from this mental, mind, maybe a Western mindset, that I think I'm going to come in and solve a problem, <laughs> to then a little more Eastern, where are saying, no, no, no more solving. Let's serve. And I think the journey is actually beyond service. And there was also shared today. How do we move towards surrendering? Service is beautiful, but it also comes with conditions sometimes mentally. How can I get to a space where I don't even realize that I'm serving or that I'm doing this? I'm just cultivating my inner being. And this is what I wanted to share with you. I think for me, this is the most important element of this path I feel like that we're all connected on is that it's not what we do. I think all of us here, I, I feel 100% that all of us here have good intentions on this planet and good intentions to help others in some way or another. So there's nothing to question that. The challenge is, are we cultivating an inner being? Are we working on a path to purifying our mind and hearts? Because as we've been sharing, the world is full of darkness and light. And it's up to us to cultivate the light. How do we purify our mind? How do we let go of the ego in the work that we do? Like we're saying, Akkarma or Niswarka. How? It's very difficult. We have to put in practices in our lives. It's not just if I pray to God or pray to Swamiji that something will come out. I must also practice. Just like if I want to become a muscle man, what do I do? I go to the gym. If I want to become more compassionate, what do I need to do? I need to practice giving. I need to practice serving, maybe invisibly. How do I practice service without feeling like it was me that was the doer? I have to try different experiments. There was an experiment I once did, this was maybe six, seven years ago, I felt my ego was very strong as I stepped into the service space. Maybe coming as a, from a performing space, whatnot. But for me, my ego was very strong. And I said, okay, I'm going to do a small experiment. I'm not going to look in the mirror for 30 days. This is just an experiment. I don't know why it came up for me, but it did. Because I realized that I'm judging people, I'm judging myself. And I think the first space of judgment is the physical judgment. And so, like this, as I was doing that, I actually realized and saw my judgment of others and myself going down. I wasn't checking how my hair was looking that day, or maybe it was not good because many people were like, oh man, this guy looks very lousy. But it was a process for me. Like this, small little experiments, we can all do. Some people fast, a lot of people meditate. All forms of experimentation that we can do in our lives, personal practices that help cultivate our inner being. I think it's important to become aware of what we are trying to work on within, what are our challenges, what are the things that we find as weaknesses inside of being, and how can we actually work on that on a day-to-day -day basis to shift that.
towards being a more pure uh, heart or mind. Um, I know we're running out of time, but I wanted to share a song with you. Would you guys like to hear one last song? Yes. Yeah. Um, I wanted to share a song that, that fits behind this message, which is uh, a quote by Nelson Henderson. He said, the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you do not expect to sit. In rebuilding, in this concept of rebuilding a country, rebuilding our country, rebuilding the spirit of our country, I think we have to think in terms of lifetimes. What are the seeds you, I, we will plant in this lifetime and water in this lifetime and nurture in this lifetime so that generations from now will receive the fruits. And this is one way we can practice Nisvartha. When we realize what we're doing may not change the world, it may not change everything at one time, but it's planting the seeds and making a path for others to come. How do we become ladders instead of leaders? And I encourage us to use this word more actually. That we don't need leaders in this country, we need ladders. To bring others with us, to climb on our shoulders so that they can see further instead of competing to be the boss and to be the one at the top. So I encourage us, this last song I want to share with you is in this message. How do we offer ourselves without expecting anything in return? How do we give our service to the world without saying this is what I need, this is the credit, these are the results I have to see. So I want us to sing along. I'm going to go to the next slide. You guys will sing along with me? Yes. Okay. I'll give you the melody and we can sing along and then we'll play with the music. It goes like this. And everyone, let's do our hand. We're going to do the hand actions together. So it goes like this. Whatever grows will grow. Whatever dies will die. Whatever works will work. Whatever flies will fly. Whatever fails will fail. What's meant to soar will soar. I am planting seeds of the more. Awesome. Ready?
But the roots are always growing, no matter if I'm dead or never around. Alright, here we go. We're gonna sing this together three times. We can turn the music up just a little. Three, two, whatever the roots will grow, whatever the ties will die. we have, every activity or karma we do is planting a seed. And how can we plant these beautiful seeds along our daily life's path so that it looks like the flowers outside in the garden here at the ashram after many, many years or lifetimes. So may we all keep planting seeds to not only rebuild India and rebuild planet Earth, but really to rejuvenate ourselves in this moment that we have while we're here on this planet. Thank you. Uh, to make one request from this side. Please sing Hummingbird. What? Hummingbird, please. Hummingbird. Hummingbird? Yeah. Hummingbird! Is that that? That one more time. Hummingbird. Hummingbird was a story we shared. Wait. Is that a song? Remember? Is this a story? Any other song? We can do one more song if you like. I don't know if we have time though. Should we do one more song? Yeah. But it's not on the hummingbird, it's a different song. The song is called Grateful. And it's uh it's a song about uh bowing ourselves down for all the blessings that we have in our lives. So, I think for me, as an ending to this event, I don't know what the forces are, what the, uh, what our lineage, the blessings that we've had in order for all of us to be here together today. All the cultivation, Swamiji, going back to Swami Vivekananda and beyond his mentors, Ramakrishna, and so many blessings that we are a part of that we have received, how are we going to pay that forward in this lifetime? So this song is called Grateful. Um, the chorus, I would love for us to sing together. You, I'll do my hand actions, but you can try to remember. It says, all that I am, all that I see, all that I've been and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing and I'm grateful for it all. So this is the song, Grateful. Please join along as we sing the chorus. You're my life, you're my breath, 
You're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love, you're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're the love, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun, you're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend to the end, you're my dreams, you're my father, you're that hands on the ground, the miracles that surround, feeling it all around, the hemisphere with the clouds, you're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow, you're the blessings that exist, the small things that have lived, the gift to realize everything is a gift.